All right. Good morning, everybody, or good evening, wherever you are. Um, it is morning here in Colorado, and uh, I apologize. I am in a hotel room, so if the um, if the Wi-Fi you know causes some slowness and the you know uh, the picture blurs out, uh, my apologies. But um, uh, it's my son's birthday, and so we're out uh, we're out traveling a little bit for this weekend. So, um, but uh, thank you for being here today. We're going to talk about some recon stuff. I know it's a big surprise for those of you who follow me, right? Um, and uh, so, you know, over the course of the last, I would say, two years, I have transitioned from um, being, you know, very, very focused uh, on bug bounty uh, into kind of hybrid focusing on bug bounty and red teaming. And so um, basically what that means is that I've had to uh, go back into the learning stage and kind of understand, you know, what in my recon methodology that I had given you guys um you know over the years as part of the bug hunters methodology you know was there anything different that i was not doing that like a real adversary would do to emulate them in a red team campaign and so um you know a lot of you have seen my content and um you know the thing that i think is special about my content is i'm, I'm always updating it for um uh for you guys and you know and the methodology and stuff like that so i've got some new stuff for you today i've got some stuff that we presented at DEF CON, I've got, um, and then I've got um, some other stuff too that, you know, if you're not just doing traditional bug bounty work and you're doing some more security assessment work like red team or penetration testing too, I have some stuff for you guys today as well. So um, let's kick it off and I'm gonna share my screen real quick. Let's see if this works here. Okay, so I should be sharing my screen. Um, and you should be able to see it. Uh, and so what you're seeing here on my screen is the is the deck, right? And so a lot of you know I do a whole course on bug hunting um, called the Bug Hunters, bug Hunters Methodology Live. It's a live course. I do it four times a year. Um, and so uh, this is the full gamut of day one of the course. So it's, uh, it's an introduction to recon, scoping, ASNs, uh, tracking your data, showed on acquisitions, cloud, reverse who is, linked analysis, all this stuff, right? So um, the the recon kind of methodology, if you're going to do it um, to its its fullest, um, this is usually what I do for any one given target, whether it's a wide scope bounty or whether it's a um, whether it's a red team test. And so this is kind of um, the general workflow here. And a lot of people have seen all the way up until frameworks in these slides. And this year I added a whole bunch of um, credential operation stuff in the red team world, which uh, we might go over today. I thought I had 30 minutes, but I actually have an hour. So, um, so that's pretty good. So today I thought we would focus on, um, on a couple areas, which I think are just like you must have in recon. Um, and I was going to show you guys some examples. Um, and then we would move on to maybe a couple pieces of the new content and some of the new tools that I've added to my methodology. And that should be a pretty good solid hour for everybody, um, especially if we do, you know, command line examples and running the tools. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to move into um, the first part, which is autonomous system numbers. So let me start here. Okay. So uh, the first thing that I talk about in my course, which is really the first recon method after I talk about scoping and bug bounties and stuff like that, is ASNs. So um, what are we after when we look at a company, right? So when we look at a company for a wide scope bug bounty program or a, um, or a red team campaign is we want to find all of their assets, right? Which could be domains, it could be IPs that they're hosting services on, not necessarily something they have a website on, but maybe that they have like a a service level service, um, you know, on a different port. Um, and so we need to find all of their IP space. Now, the first technique is um, is finding their ASN. And so their ASN, the autonomous system number is what ASN stands for. And so an ASN basically is a representation of their BGP routing data, which is just like, it's just like a code. It's a code that represents a company that's grown large enough that they need routing data on the internet um, published as, a, as an ASN. And so if you're, you know, if you're looking at a company, um, you're probably looking at one or two types of companies. What you're going to look at is maybe you're looking at a big company and uh, they will most, you know, any relatively medium to large size company will have an ASN. And so you'll need to find it. 
And if you can find their ASN via, you know, a couple of sites that we're going to talk about, um, you'll find their owned IP space, right? So the, the IP the IP space that they legit own. Now, in today's world, everybody is hybrid, right? So we all run, you know, most big businesses run infrastructure themselves on their own IPs that they own, and then they are also in the cloud. And so we have to talk about cloud recon as well. Now, um, now one of the things that uh, we're going to talk about is, you know, how to find the ASN, some backups that um, that I use for ASN, and then um, and then what we do with the ASN data once we get it. So since this is a workshop, I'm going to go through some of it live. Um, and so I just won't like bore you guys to death with slides, right? And so we'll we'll choose like a couple of my favorite targets or something like that, and then we'll we'll understand what to do with them. Now, when we talk about ASNs, the thing about ASNs is that a lot of people want to automate certain steps of recon. They want to just plug it into like a framework or something like that. And this is one of the areas that I tell my students all the time is don't automate finding the ASN part. Um, there's a couple parts in the methodology that I talk about don't automate. Um, the reason I say don't automate this is because um, a lot of the tools that are, you know, looking at uh, looking at a search for a company, um, you know, will come back and give you IP ranges or ASN numbers for the company's search, but there might be more than one company that's named that thing. So, for instance, when you when you search just raw Tesla, right, um, you know, in any of these search engines, you know, you could get back Tesla Motors, which you know, it would be a target that we could be after, or you could be, get back several other companies that have Tesla in their name, right? And so there's some of the tools that allow you to specify a domain like Tesla.com, which would only return the ASN that Tesla.com sat in, um, but Tesla Motors might have more than one ASN. And so there's two ways that automation can fail in this section. One is it it only scopes on the domain that you give it, Tesla.com, or it, on, or it overscopes and you find a different company and you pull back IP ranges that don't belong to your target. And so that's why I always say this part, even though you know a lot of people don't like to do manual stuff, um, you know, is it behooves you to, to do this part manually. So if, uh, if I change my screen sharing here, um, I will go into using uh, the web browser. Give me one second. Window, cool. Okay, so this is Hurricane Electric. This is the site that um, that I tell everybody to usually go to. And so we want to go to Hurricane Electric's um, BGP um, that he.net site. A lot of you have seen me use this in the Bug Hunters methodology. I still use it today to do a free form search of um, of a website. So we could choose any company here, and this is. You know, I'm walking you through basically my recon methodology as I, you know, pretty much do it. So start on the company and we'll just say like, you know, um, twitch.tv and um, actually I just want to search Twitch, sorry, freeform text search up pop. And so when you search Twitch on Hurricane Electric, because they're this aggregator of all this BGP data, they have um, Twitch's uh, ASNs here. And so you can see... Twitch is represented by AS number 46489 and AS397153. Um, and so uh, this is you know one example of maybe where you could have just put twitch.tv in one of the command line tools that'll give you ASN data back. And um, and if it doesn't have like some sort of recursion where it then went back and just searched for the description name Twitch Interactive Inc., might have just given you one of these ASNs. Um, so if we can go inside any of these on Hurricane Electric and click in there. And then it'll have some information, but eventually it'll have prefixes, v4, which means they're IPv4 ranges. And then so here you can see Twitch has quite a few ranges in here. Um, now in our in our case for you know a bug bounty hunt or a red team engagement, um, this is really good for us. It's a really good starting place for us to understand what Twitch owns. Now obviously Twitch is going to be one of those businesses that's hybrid. It's going to have you know, owned IP space like this, and it's also going to have a whole bunch of cloud stuff. So we're going to cover um, cloud recon um, as well. So um, I would then notate all this. A lot of people ask me in this phase, like, you know, like, how do I clean this up? Like, do it, would I literally just copy and paste? And it's like, yeah, sometimes I, I do just literally copy and paste this into a note somewhere uh, or into, uh, you know, Nano, or, um, you know, on my Linux box and just grab out the IP ranges. Um, if you're an aspiring hacker, uses a lot of, you know, 
uh, AI, you can just ask AI to parse it for you. Just say, I want just the ranges. Uh, there's a lot of ways to just get what you need out of this list, but um, these are the ranges that eventually want to scan. And so what do you do with these IP ranges um, you know, in the reconnaissance process? Well, the first part uh, is just notating them. And then the second part would be scanning them for two sets of things. The first set of things is you want to get out all of the web servers that are possibly being hosted on these IP ranges, because those are very those are very pointed to what you might be doing, hacking websites for a bounty. Um, and you also want to do a full port scan on these to see if there's any services. Most interesting you know, services for red teamers are remote administration protocols. So things like SSH, uh, you know, things that host files like FTP or SFTP, um, RDP open, um, you know, things like that. Things where we can use credentials that we might be holding on to to try to log into services on their own network. So, um, so you can do a lot of things uh, with the IP ranges. So, that's the first part. Um, it's then you get into like, okay, so you have an IP range. Well, what do we want to do with it? So you can grab this slash twenty four here and just copy it. And let me switch my screen sharing real quick. And we will go to, sorry, the app I have to switch every time for the screen share. Uh, we will go to my command line. Or we'll go back to the slides. Yeah, that'll work. And, um, and so eventually what we'll want to do is we want to take these, uh, these ASNs and eventually port scan them. And so, uh, for the port scan, I, um, Nabu used to have a, Nabu is Project Discovery's um, port scanner. They used to have a function where you could just echo in um, an ASN direct, an AS number directly into Nabu, and then it would expand it into its uh, individual IP addresses and then do the port scan. Um, that feature is currently not working, or at least last, last time I ran the class, it wasn't working. Um, so uh, I use an intermediary, an intermediary tool here called ASN map. Um, and so the syntax at the top here, you, we could just echo our ASN or AS number from whatever company into ASMAP-silent into Nabu-silent. And then you can get a full port scan of any of those ranges. Um, and the great thing about Nabu these days is that Nabu actually comes with a flag called um, dash nmap CLI. And so what nmap CLI does is it then it passes the output of Nabu to nmap to do a full service-based scan. So right now we're just looking for ports on these ranges. But eventually when you get those ports back, the next part of the reconnaissance stage would be to um, run a, a full service scan with nmap, right? So um, Nabu and many faster port scanners out there um, are... Uh, are really good at port scanning quickly just for ports. But Nmap still remains the king um, for service fingerprinting because they have the most up-to-date service fingerprint library. And so if, if you find a port and then you pass it to this command, you'll then get back um, more information about the service, maybe the version, you know, all, all the stuff that can be given to you by the header and all of Nmap's fingerprinting libraries. And so that's kind of the command that you can use in the second screenshot there. Echo the ASN into ASN map, ASS, uh, ASN map to expand it, and then pipe it into Nabu um, with uh, with nmap CLI and map dash SV. And so that's actually the whole workflow that we used to have to chain together a few more tools actually to do this. Um, now it's in one uh, it's in one or two tools. So um, and some command line syntax, which is really really valuable. So. Um, this is uh, this is kind of how we we do that today. So as a red teamer, um, you know there is a concern about stealth at this point, and then there's also a concern for bug bounty hunters about speed when it comes to the port scanning. And so, um, in my daily driving workflow, uh, what I do is um, is I will use SMAP first instead of uh, doing the verbatim port scan that we just talked about, because that touches my target. And a lot of the times I want to wait until I'm ready to actually touch my target um, in the red team stuff. And so um, what SMAP does is it's a tool that basically parses Shodan. So you need, um, you need to be somewhat familiar with Shodan, but not really. What you need to be familiar with is, um, is NMAP syntax, because that's how this tool takes um, its commands. And so you don't even need a Shodan key for uh, this tool to do port analysis on a target. 
And so um, what I will do is, um, is I have a, a script that will basically do all of my subdomain enumeration first, uh, the first level of it, the very fast stuff, you know, things like subfinder um, with all my API keys um, baked into it. And then I will pass that to SMAP, which will go out to the free showdown API and do a port scan. Uh, but it's not actually touching my target. It's just querying showdown's database for what ports they know that this domain has um, open. And so this is useful, uh, like I said, because you're never going to touch your target at all. And you might get um, some port information that, um, that is valuable to you so you can plan your engagement. This can also be useful because even a you know, a pretty, you know, uh, structured port scan across a big organization, even if you're on a bounty, um, depending on how aggressive they are with um, banning you, um, you know, they could ban you if you're doing a pretty aggressive service scan, because not only are you doing the port interrogation, but then you're also like grabbing the banner. And if they see that, you know, massively over, you know, a whole range of theirs, they might ban your IP. So the first stage of just doing like this SMAP um, scan is actually really useful in a lot of cases. Um, so SMAP is like the first kind of port scan I do, which is against Shodan's data. And then I will later on move into a, a full blown port scan like we uh, port scan like we talked about with Nabu. So that is um, that is port scanning, uh, you know, kind of the ranges that we get back. And so, you know, we're looking when we port scan the stuff for web servers. There's some other ways that um, we can find our company's owned assets, though. And so um, we're going to talk about uh, Cloud Recon uh, really quick. So let me get to that section. So what we've talked about is finding our company's own ASN. What you'll find sometimes, though, is if you get assigned a bounty or um, a client that is a startup, a small company, they won't have an ASN. Or if they're completely cloud-based, um, you know, like fr from their inception, they've, they've never owned their own IP space. They've always used Amazon or GCP or Azure. Um, well, then, you know, you're not going to find anything via ASNs, right? You're not going to have any owned IP space. So in which case, we're going to have to look in the cloud for all of their assets because um, that's where their company does business. Now, when we're looking at the cloud, um, we're really going to have to do a lot of SSL certificate enumeration to find our targets, domains, and, and subdomains. Mostly, we're after subdomains. Um, but sometimes with these techniques, we can also find new Apex domains and uh, an internal domain, domain names, too. So there's a lot of projects that do this kind of stuff. You may be familiar with um, you know, cert.sh and, you know, some of these other sites that do this. And basically what all these projects are doing is they're keeping track of all the certificates on the internet. And so when you connect to a domain or an IP and you get back its SSL certificate, there's several places where there's domain information embedded inside the SSL certificate. One is just the common name, um, you know, in the certificate. So you can see there's a Screenshot of the first screenshot says ancestry.com. But there's also a whole bunch of other fields that give um, possible DNS or subdomain names about our company, which here in Nike, you can see if you look in the um, subject alt name field, you can see there's a bunch of subdomains listed there too that the certificate pertains to. And so um, certificates are a great way to map out um, what. IP addresses your target, you know, your target website or your target company works on, and then also other subdomains they might have for their company. And so really uh, what we're going to do, is, and a lot of the projects that, you know, I mentioned do is we're going to go out and scan the entire internet for all of its SSL certs, which sounds crazy, but with today's technology uh, can actually be done decently quickly. Um, and you have your own database of all the certificate information and you can use it on your own. So um, one of these tools is called Cloud Recon. Um, myself and Gunnar Andrews, uh, better known as Golden CyberSec, um, built this tool for DEF CON. And um, this tool basically is the fastest tool right now to scan um, any, uh, any server and pull out its, um, its SSL fields for and parse them into the command or, par or deliver them via the command line. And so you can run Cloud Recon on, um, on the internet, uh, or you can run Cloud Recon on all of the cloud ranges, and it will go and visit each IP 
and grab its cert and parse out the data and deliver it on the command line, then you can just dump it to a text file. And so um, Cloud Recon will take just over two hours to do all of the cloud ranges on a pretty standard DigitalOcean box that, that we run. It's been taking a little bit longer lately, like, you know, like two and a half, maybe three hours. Um, but I built a database in like, I think three hours earlier this week. And so I'll show you kind of what that looks like. Let me switch screens real quick. Oh, where's the button I want to do? Oh, I was hiding it, sorry. All right, we will go to the shell. OK, so here I am in my VPS. Um, and um, in my VPS, I have Cloud Recon, so I can just CD into my tools directory. Um, I'm in tools already. So let's look at Cloud Recon. And then in Cloud Recon, um, basically, uh, you can um, you can use it. So we can go. Uh, new Cloud Recon scrape. And this is kind of the run. Um, we would have to use the I flag to input a file here. But to do the scraping of the internet, it's pretty simple. You do Cloud Recon scrape, and then you give it a file of IP ranges. Now, in the previous slide I just showed you, there's a repo of a guy who basically keeps up to date all of the IP ranges for um, the cloud uh, vendors. And so you can just download his one file, which I, I linked at the bottom of the slide, and feed that to Cloud Recon Scrape. And that will actually help you build your cloud database of all the certificate data. And so um, that is what I did last week. And so um, now I should just have a text file here. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, which one do I want to use? We'll do 12.11 is the one I want. OK, so that's the last one I did. So I run this every once in a while to update it. So if we just cat out 12, right, um, you can see that this will go on forever, right? I have I have parsed all of the internet's SSL certificate or all of the cloud certificate data from all the cloud um, providers, right? I went through every IP, request the certificate on the IP level, and brought back what, uh, what domains and subdomains it has associated to that. So we're going to kill this because that will go on forever. But um, we can easily just use some grep now that I have this database, and we can cat out um, that file. And pretty easily, we can just start grepping for a target. So if we want to go um, Twitch, we can do grep uh, twitch.tv. And you can see now we start to see every IP address that had the word twitch.tv in its SSL cert data. And so um, if Twitch is a hybrid company, which it is, um, we're, we're finding all of this stuff that they have in the cloud. So now we kind of know where they are in the cloud, um, where all their servers are. And then also in some of these certificates, we're getting um, subdomain data of uh, Twitch here, like live.twitch.tv, live ATL, live IAD. So this is like, you know, basically a whole bunch of like, I'm guessing streaming, um, localized streaming um, servers of theirs. And so this is really great um, that we can do this now and figure out what they have in the cloud. And we've already kind of figured out what they had from their own IP space in, with their ASNs. Um, but how do we parse this into something useful? Because it's a lot of data, especially for Twitch. So in the slides, um, which I will provide to you guys um, afterwards for IWCon, um, there is some bash magic in one of the slides. So let me copy it over. And so we can go 
here. And we can take that and we can just replace our domain right here. Should work. Oops, syntax error. Sad. There we go. Nope. Where are we airing out? Oh, we need to quote that out. Why does that quote the rest out? Well, I thought I had this fixed. I'll have to fix it. <laughs> um, so what we're trying to do is put this into a list format. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to pause screen sharing real quick. You guys can see my beautiful face in a second. And then I will go to, uh, I'm just gonna use my history command, which you won't see right now, don't worry. And just see when I did the demo, what the difference was between the command. Um, Okay, so we did this awk said grep dash F. Okay. Let's try this again. I will share my screen. Let me get that set up. Doing it live, guys. That's pretty much how the classes go to. <laughs> oh, the quote before Twitch. OK. All right, all right. Thank you. We'll go back to command line. Do -do. Whoa, that's weird. There we go. It was like a back tick instead of a quote. That was probably just me fat finger fat fingering it for the slides. Oh, and now I gotta add twitch.tv here. Cool. So this parsed through all of the data um for the cloud thing and then sorted and uniqued it too so these are all the unique subdomains um and the wildcard domains that we found for twitch so um so that's not bad um, we have all this though it's important to remember is that we've sorted and uniqued this data um and um so we're losing all the context that we had with you know what ip addresses they're actually on um, which is important to us later and so um you know like i just dump all this to a file um all of the ip data but i am just really interested in um you know in the first pass like all the subdomains and stuff like that so this is useful um another thing that you can do here is that we can actually not grep out the second time here twitch.tv and um i think it'll still work let's see so this will go to all of those servers uh that mentioned um that mentioned twitch 
and it'll give us all of the names that appeared in their certificate data. Now, this is useful for possibly, very possibly, finding new Apex domains. Um, now, obviously, you can see there's some stuff in here that is not Twitches, like blizzard.com and stuff like that. And so these have to be looked at. But um, you can look at these certificates and see that whole other domains are hosted on them um, sometimes, and that they do belong to Twitch in, in some cases. And so um, you can look through this wide, uh, this kind of wider scope um, analysis of the certificates um, to, to check that out. So another one that, um, that I wanted to do was uh, we have the IP ranges that we got a little while ago. And one of the IP ranges, um, I want to show off a new tool by Hack Luke. It's not exactly new, but it's an iteration on a tool that he previously created, which is um, Hack IP to host. And what Hack IP to host will do is, um, is basically it'll take an IP range. And, and this is one I got directly from bgp.he.net. And it will basically, PRIPs will parse that into individual IP red, uh, I, uh, individual IP addresses. And then it will feed it to Hack IP to host, which will do two methods. It'll look at the certificate data that, um, that we're talking about for the cloud, but it'll look for it on you know, one IP. And it'll also do reverse a uh, reverse DNS lookup on it as well. So this is one of Twitch's IP ranges. And if I run it through hack IP to host, um, this is really interesting because we know Twitch owns this IP range 23.160.0.0 uh, slash 24. And so we've already discovered via looking at the SSL certs that they have a different, they have this live-video.net Apex domain that you know, with about ninety percent confidence, we can say belongs to Twitch, um, which you know, many bounty hunters who do recon or red teamers who do recon do not get this deep in the weeds of recon. And so this is usually where I succeed, like finding these things that nobody else has found. And so here you can start to see some of the other stuff we saw when we looked in the um, when we looked in the other data. We can see just regular subdomain data and stuff like that, but. Um, we did not have uh, live-video.net as an Apex domain yet. Um, and then you get some subdomains too. And so you can run all of their um, all of their stuff through Hack IP to host for those two methods. And you can point it at a range, which is, um, which is pretty cool. I wasn't actually using reverse DNS very much in my workflow until I saw Hack Luke you know, this week or last week when he, he did like a Twitter post on it. And I was like, oh, dope, I need to add um, you know, like a, a DNS pointer reference tool to the workshop to point out the ASNs, um, as well as port scanning them, right, which I showed. And so um, we, I added it, and then uh, he was like, oh, hey, well, I made this new one, Hack IP to host, because I was using Hack Rev DNS, which was his old tool. Um, and he was like, this one does SSL parsing and reverse and uh, DNS queries. So I was like, okay, cool. So, um, so this is, you know, new in my presentation and, um, you know, feel free to use Hack, uh, Hack Luke's tool. It's it's really dope, and it's what I'm using right now. All right, let us continue. Go back to the slides. Share screen. PowerPoint. So hopefully that's useful to you guys. Um, here is the uh, syntax for, oh yeah, I did put a back tick. Look at that right there. Come on, Jason, get with it. Why is it coming through as a back tick? That's weird. Some like PowerPoint text dumbness. Okay, anyway, I'll fix that. Okay, um, okay so if you wanna parse out all the subs from the Cloud Recon data, um, here's the command. Um, if you want to parse out all domains because you can get potential apexes, this is the command here. Um, I'm going to release a version of the slides of everything I showed you today, um, the cloud section, the ASN section, to um, IWCon, and they can distribute you know, the talk slides however they do that. So as a backup, um, as a backup, if you don't want to run Cloud Recon, um, on your own machine, like let's say you don't have a beefy enough machine, which it doesn't actually take that much to run a you know Cloud Recon to build your own certificate database. Um, there is a collective of hackers called Kaferjaeger, and Kaferjaeger 
um, does the same idea. They run um, SSL um, inspection data um, on the cloud ranges, and they give you text files just to download on their sites uh, in the second link in the slide down there. And so you can just go to that link. And if you go to that link and you dig through the website, um, you'll see that the dates are kind of old when you get to the, the folder structure um, landing page. That is not accurate. So the folder structure run, um, the folder structure is actually not being updated with the correct date. If you drill down into those folders and look at the runs that they're doing, they're probably doing a new scan every three weeks. Um, and so if you can't be bothered to build your own certificate data, data um, database, uh, then you can just download their text files, which are the, you know, the same format as ours, um, as me and Golden uh, built in, uh, in our tool. And um, and you can use their text files. Um, so they have it split up by they have it they have them split it up by cloud, um, and you just download the text files, and then you grep them in the same way that you grep ours, um, and then you can you can get your target stuff as long as you're good with like the two to three week lag that they have between running it. Um, like I said with Cloud Recon, you can run it every two hours and have a fresh dump of. Um, basically all of the SSL certs for the cloud ranges. Now you can also use Cloud Recon. We called it Cloud Recon because the, you know, we wanted to do something like this, but really, really fast. And Golden put a lot of work into um, Cloud Recon to make it really performant. Um, but um, Cloud Recon actually can just be fed any IP. So you'll notice notice at the bottom here. We used Lord Alfred's repo, which I talked about, which is just all the cloud uh, IPv4 addresses merged into a list. And so really when we run cloud recon scrape, we run it at that list and it's really useful to us. Um, but cloud recon can actually point it at any IP range or single IP, just like um, just like Luke's tool. And so um, what, some other use cases is that you could actually scan the whole internet. And that's actually what you know, Golden has built out a private cloud in his basement, <laughs> and he scans the whole internet <laughs> for SSL cert data. Um, and so he just goes out to every IP address on the entire internet and um, and grabs certificate data and keeps the database. And so you could do that too, or portions of the internet. Um, to run the whole internet through Cloud Recon takes significantly more beefy hardware, and it takes uh, longer as well. It can take up to you know, two, three, four days sometimes, depending on your hardware, but you can do it. Um, and the thing we talk about, you know, pretty often is that like, if you're an aspiring hacker and you want to make these databases yourself and be, have the freshest recon possible for your target, um, you could be running a couple really beefy VPSs, anywhere from one to five, and then be getting an updated scan of the entire internet pretty much on a rolling basis every day uh, for all the certificate data. Um, with a tool like Cloud Recon, um, as long as you're able to support a bunch of Go routines <laughs> um, for the tool. So, so that is Cloud Recon. Um, that is the parsing of Cloud Recon, and that is the backup k for Jaeger, um, if you guys uh, want to check it out. Um, and then k for Jaeger uses the same type of parsing um, that, that we use as well. So that is Cloud Parsing, and um, let's see here. Let's go back to the index. So we've done ASNs and cloud parsing really quickly. And then this is kind of the um, kind of the rest of the stuff we can go over. So there's a lot of stuff. This is a full day class that I usually deliver. And we usually do more examples than just one. We show all the tools and we, we discuss a lot about the methods. So I'm going to look in chat here. Is there another specific place you guys want to demo for the talk before we get into kind of like Q&A and I'll just take audience kind of poll and see uh, if there's something that you guys want to do. Reverse who is? We got one vote. Showed on, showed on. I got three votes for Shodan, two votes for Reverse Who Is. All right, looks like we'll go over 
Shodan. Okay. All right. Let's do Shodan then. Um, all right. Let me get to this section. So Shodan happens pretty much after, right after I grab ASNs for everything. So, um, so this section is for using Shodan and some auxiliary stuff. But why do we use Shodan attackers? Well, first of all, it's passive, right? Querying Shodan does not alert our target at all that we're touching them. And Shodan is basically this infrastructure spider that will go out to the entire internet and download information about its headers, its IP space, um, sometimes the code it has, its title, its SSL certificate data. It basically grabs all of this stuff and keeps it in a database for hackers to use. And so uh, we can query Shodan's database without ever touching our target. So it's it's completely passive. And so I used to be kind of a hater on Shodan a little bit. Not, not a hater. I just didn't see any practical use for it in Bug Bounty. Um, and then I was proven very wrong. And then when I transitioned into more red teaming as my full-time day job, um, we... Uh, you know, you, you have to use Shodan a lot because you don't want to hit your target. You want to stay completely passive. So I'll talk about a couple of things. Um, just Shodan, it's mo this section is more about like Shodan tips and tricks and some tools I use for this. So Shodan is, um, you know, is an infrastructure um, spider and you buy a subscription key to it, which is not super expensive, but for a lot of it, you will need an actual API key. You'll need to buy a Shodan API key. And then you can use it search you know, um, it's search bar when you go to Shodan.io and do all of these um, basically like uh, syntax searches. So on the right is kind of the best um, cheat sheet I've seen for manual Shodan, just to give you an example of the, the search structure and, uh, and query syntax for just the search bar. Um, it was written by uh, Cyber Rights, which is a company, um, and um, the link for the cheat sheet is down below. And so if, if you want to get really good at just the manual part of this and doing this, um, you know, this would be the cheat sheet that I follow. Um, you know, when you're on Shodan, it looks very much like this. You can put in a raw domain name, like I have twitch.tv up in the upper left-hand corner in the search bar. And then it'll come back with some, um, you know, some stuff. <laughs> and you can, you know, see that it's spidered a whole bunch of stuff where twitch.tv might be mentioned. You can also search with a whole bunch of those operators that we saw on the last page you know, like org.twitch.tv or something like that, or org colon, and it'll give you back data. And so that's using the website, but most hackers, you know, are not using the website for most things with Shodan. They're going to use the command line um, or they're going to wrap Shodan in another tool to do exactly what they want. Um, on the right-hand side here, I have a picture of my mind map when I'm attacking a target and how I build it out. Um, you know, so I am just asking myself questions in this mind map just to remind myself. So in just this regular search on the website, I saw, you know, there is that they're using Fastly um, as a CDN um, on that one, um, one IP. In one of their SSL certificates is mentioned twitch.amazon.eu. And I kind of want to know why they're um, associated to Amazon. You know, obviously, if you've tested Twitch before, you know that they're an Amazon company. So, but, you know, i I show this slide as a complete newbie, right? Like, you know, these are the type of questions you'll ask yourself. There is uh, Twitch trace ID, which is a, a header that's coming back in some of their um, websites. And so like, I want to ask myself, what does that header do? It's a custom header. Um, custom headers are, you know, usually based into application logic for routing, parsing, and custom user flows. And so um, if you were looking at Godfather Orwa's tweets this week, he talked about finding 150 SQL injections over the last year. Um, I had a discussion with him. Um, really a lot of, you know, SQL injection these days takes place inside of custom headers because they're par parsed into these specialized tracking flows for users um, and logging. And so um, there still exists the opportunity to do like some SQL injection, especially blind SQL injection inside of custom headers. And so, um, so you know, I, I just put that in the notes here in my mind map of, um, oh, what is this header? Maybe I should look at it later, you know, so. But um, other than doing the search and just gathering some notes, uh, the one thing that kind of changed my mind on Shodan was a tool called Karma. Uh, so Karma um, is written by, um, uh, man, I can't pronounce his name. It's Dira, um, but um, Karma V2 is dope. It is, uh, it is a super cool tool. What Karma V2 does is it wraps around um, the Shodan API and it does a whole bunch of 
Shodan queries. And um, it has a whole bunch of built-in Shodan dorks into it, what I, what I call Shodan dorks, right? Saved searches that find interesting things, basically. If, you're, you know, if you've been a, a person who's lived through security long enough, you've used Google dorks. And if you're into bug hunting, you've probably used some GitHub dorks. Well, you know, Shodan has dorks too, you know, just uh, search query syntax that will help you find interesting things. And so what Karma will do is you'll pass it a domain um, here, you know, just in the sample documentation, they pass it um, forward, which is a um, VDP on Hacker One, and it will go out and use all these dorks. And it will find you, um, it will find you all kinds of really interesting things. So you point it at Ford and you get back this rainbow table, uh, rainbow looking table at the top. And it gives you, you know, everything that has login in the SSL subject um, or the title. Uh, it gives you a subsection of everything that returns a 403 forbidden. Um, it gives you everything that aired out with a 500 status. And then at the bottom, it starts to give you really interesting dorks. So in all of the Shodan data it looked at for Ford.com, it found four Jetty web pages, six Grafana web pages, eight MongoDB server metric pages, and one Spring Boot page, um, which these are all really interesting targets for bug bounty hunters or red teams because um, they're all infrastructure-based type web applications um, that allow you to control the infrastructure via a website. They've all had CVEs on them. They all have the potential for default passwords or credential stuffing for them. They all control infrastructure or monitor infrastructure of some sort. Um, and so they're really, really interesting. And they can also be misconfigured pretty often by people setting them up if they don't know what they're doing. And so these are really interesting targets to, um, to go after. And so the built-in dorks that Karma has around looking at the Shodan data um, are really valuable. Um, and they're all in a file. And so uh, it's in, they're all in a file called uh, fingerprints. And so they're made with this Shodan query syntax that we saw in the cheat sheet on, um, on, the, first on the first slide. And so you can add your own templates with just or your own scan your own scan checks for Shodan in this file by just adding a line to the file. And I've added a whole bunch of things. Um, so you can see there's different ways to do the Shodan syntax for searching. So the first part of it is you you give a name for the check, which you know could be anything SSL issuer, SSL subject, directory listing, you know whatever PHP info. And then you tell it where to look, the HTTP.title. And this is just the same syntax you would you would look for in the search and the value of the search you want. And then host name, you filter by what you're looking at, which most of the time when you're building this will just be the same syntax. So star dot dollar sign target, uh, and, then, um, and then you wrap it in double quotes. And so this is not as complicated as it looks, I promise you. Um, there's some ways to really get some great inspiration to build your own signatures in Karma um, at the end of the slides. So I'll walk through those in a second. So you can do some really cool passive analysis of your target using Karma. Um, another thing that I, you know, I might just use, uh, showed on for is just looking for subdomains for a target. And so for that, I use show sub go. And the question I get asked here is like, why use show sub go when a mass and sub finder have modules for, um, for baking in your showed on key. And then, um, and then finding all of the subdomains. And this is a recurring theme in my class. I talk about tools is that, um, is that basically tools that attempt to do more than one thing often do, <laughs> uh, the more than one things at like an 80% effectiveness. And then tools that are designed to do just one thing usually can bridge a gap of that last 20% and get you back more because that's all they're focusing on. And this is, very similar to like the Linux um, Linux type philosophies of how single tools do single things and then you pipe them together to build a great big thing. Um, and so when I use show sub go, the way it parses the Shodan API is sometimes more effective than a mass or sub finder when I just give them my API keys. So it doesn't hurt me that much just to chain together these tools and unique them in my own tooling or in some kind of framework like Recon, Recon for the Win or something like that. Um, so that's why several tools in my tool chain, I use the standalone tool for it rather than 
you know, the module and some of these other big fr recon frameworks or recon tools. Um, and so a lot of people like, yo, Jason's out of date because he's, you know, using shows of going like, actually, no, I'm finding more than you because, um, because, you know, I know the way these tools work and I have benchmarked them against each other. Um, so that is, uh, you know, that what, that's what I would use to just find subdomains for a target. Now, other Shodan resources to get like to be a ninja, right? So Ben Nahamsek, you all know him. Um, he did a asset discovery with Shodan where he used the Shodan CLI binary. Um, and he just did some manual Shodan dorking and parsing through HTTPX for Shodan data. And so it's a really great video. He put it out on YouTube. Uh, it is it is probably the best Shodan, one of the best Shodan discovery videos I've seen. He came up to my course uh, and actually did some demos for us, but using the Shodan CLI in the first cohort I ran. So um, pretty, it's a pretty good resource to check out there. I did talk about, okay, so how do you get inspiration for building those dorks that you might want to bake into Karma, right? When you're doing these wide scale scans. And so these are all of the best resources. I parsed over a hundred links relating to Shodan resource and Shodan dorks. And this is what I came up with as kind of the best resources for Shodan. So the official documentation, obviously, the Shodan pen testing guide by Turgensek. Um, there's a couple talks by Godfather Aura where he talks about Shodan recon and cert.sh. And then there's three or four sites under that, which are sites that collect Shodan dorks for vulnerability finding. And so you can bake these into your karma. It, you could verbatim just take some of them from here or it'll give you a lot of inspiration as to the kind of things that people are um, putting in their own karma signature section. So um, that's, you know, where I get my um, thing. And so, you know, a lot of people ask, like, well, how do you get really fresh, you know, um, how do you get really fresh ideas for the, the Shodan dorks? And um, my answer later on in the slides is, um, is Twitter, right? I mean, it's like, uh, I am parsing Twitter for vulnerability names um, and CVEs all the time. And if there is ex if it's a web exploit that is easily findable via like um, you know the technology name in the header or something that showed on can you know spider, I'll build you know a pretty fresh um, Karma V2 uh, signature for it. Um, and so that's just part of my weekly workflow. I just search on Twitter for you know XSS, and then I look at all this either the CVEs or blog posts or whatever that people are talking about. And if it's an XSS baked into a framework or a piece of software that is widely deployed on the internet for some reason, um, I will attempt to make a uh, Shodan dork for it and include it into Karma. Um, and then I will mark it with the CVE number as the name. And then I'll scan, you know, whenever I use Karma, I'll scan and it'll be like, oh, we found this piece of technology. It might be subject to the CVE. Go look at it and I'll, I'll go check it out. So um, cool. So that's what we're going to go through today. Um, there's a lot more um in the class so we go through a full um a full day of uh of recon methods and um but yeah but uh now i think we're very close to being at the end and we can do q a if you guys have any questions and so you can see i'm in the hotel here but um yeah happy to take some questions and thanks for thanks for watching if you guys want to do the full class we'll be doing another one in um uh, in February, I'm pretty sure, um, which goes over recon and application analysis as well as the second day. So. Um, hi, Jason. Uh, awesome talk. Uh, let's get to some questions. Uh, I'll just put some of them on the screen. Uh, mm -hmm. You can just go through them. Yeah, so the PowerPoint, um, what I showed you guys was basically clips out of the full class. So I will take the sections we talked about today, I'll cut them out into uh, a PowerPoint or into a PDF, and I'll give it to IWCon, and they can distribute it. Um, I'm guessing they're going to distribute via the website somehow. Yes, yes. Um, they yeah, be cool. So I'll, I'll make sure. Would you recommend any extensions which can be use prove useful in the recon process? Um, are you talking about, I guess, I guess I'll have to address both. So if you're talking about Chrome extensions, like browser extensions, yes, I use, I use a couple. So at, at some point at the end of phase one recon, I like to call it where you, you basically have entered in your target, 
and their apex domains, and you've done a whole bunch of subdomain enumeration, you're going to end up with a bunch of subdomains. And so my workflow right now ends up shoving them all into a spreadsheet um, via a script I have. And so I shove them into a spreadsheet is because most of the time in red teaming engagements and bug bounty hunts, I'm working on wide scope programs. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and so I end up having to share that data with my team. So my, my, my red team, um, at Butterbot. And so you need a collaborative document. So really the only workable collaborative document that you can work in these days are spreadsheets, Google sheets or, um, or Microsoft Excel, which is hosted through, um, you know, their online services. And so eventually what you end up with in these spreadsheets is a giant list of domains that you found, if they resolved, then you know, they've been run through HTTPX, which gives you their HTTP links or their HTTPS links. And, you know, for just kind of a getting started, you end up with a row of HTTPS links that you just want to visit. And so in Chrome, I use a bulk URL opener extension. I think it's just called bulk URL opener. And that way I can just dump a set of 20 links from my spreadsheet into that extension and open them all as tabs in Chrome. And this one at a time, start looking at them. That's a big question I get in the class. It's like, how do you automate looking through all this stuff? And the answer is not anything magical. It's you literally web pen test each site one at a time. <laughs> um, there is no magic to you know, push button, receive bacon with the tools. It's a big misconception in bug bounty. Like the recon is meant to get you targets. And it is true that the more targets that you have, the more chances you have at hacking your organization and finding stuff, but it doesn't replace the hacking part. You actually will have to do a web application pen test on each site, which means you land on it, you do content discovery, you spider it, you look at the JavaScript, you test it for input injection, you know, you test it for cross-site scripting, all of the normal stuff. And there's a million web pen test methodologies out there, which, you know, I have my own too. Um, and so that is that is kind of the process there. So I use bulk, uh, bulk URL opener. I also, um, what else do I use? I use built with when I land on a site um, and Wappalyzer to understand what the front end frameworks are that they're using. I mean, sometimes the web server and sometimes the coding language. Um, and uh, yeah, so that is, uh, those are some of the Chrome extensions. For Burp, I use um, I use Gap right now to parse out um, Gap by XML Hacker. I use Gap to parse out JavaScript. Um, and then if there's something really fancy, like a really fancy piece of JavaScript that's like packed or minified or something like that, I'll use, I'll use um, JS Loose by Tom Nom Nom. Um, but um, pro tip, uh, we just talked about that in, in this in the class. If you are using HTTPX as part of your workflow these days, make sure to check out the new HTTPX features in the repo because they now allow a flag to automatically run JS loose on, um, on any domain that they find with a valid web server that's responding, um, and which is really powerful that they've added that flag into HTTPX. And so um, you can add it into your automation. So, uh, so that's that question. How do you come to manual testing for vulnerabilities after recon? Uh, like what time do you think this data is enough and, and now I can start manually hunting for vulnerabilities? Yeah, so this is a very common question I get. I go pretty deep, right? There are some methods in the class that I call lossy methods, meaning that I'm gonna do them, but I probably they're probably not going to net me anything on most um, most bounties because um, they're just they're, they're, uh, they don't give me back data that is, really valuable. So for instance, reverse who is can be one of these things where you can run reverse who is analysis on a target and you'll get back a bunch of like regionalized domains that they own. So like .uk or dot, you know, AU or something like that, right? And those all just redirect to the main domain. So they're not going to be apex domains that are really interesting to you. And so I call it a lossy method. Um, but uh, sometimes those lossy methods are the difference between breaking open an assessment and not breaking open an assessment. So I always do them in my methodology, even if I think they're shit. Um, <laughs> and so I will uh, I will do them and just notate them somewhere. I'll run the tools. It doesn't take me that long to run the tools, and I'll go review them when I have time. Um, so you know, 
I all usually do phases of recon. The first phase is um, Subfinder and Amass and Bbot are my three big tools for subdomain scraping. So I will use some methods to find all of the Apex domains. I will run those through those three tools, and that usually comes back really fast. It can come back within an hour. And then I use a script to turn that into a spreadsheet, and then I... I start hacking there, and then while I'm hacking, while I, I'm starting to go through sites and just land on them and do a web pen test, basically, um, I run phase two of recon, which, run, which runs the lossy tools, the ones that take longer, the ones that require a whole bunch of parsing, the ones that you know maybe will not give me data that I'm interested in, but I want to run anyway. And so that's my phase two recon. And then um, at some point, I will just pause hacking and go look at the output of phase two, see if I found anything that is really interesting. If I didn't, I'll go back to hacking. If not, then I'll go, um, uh, I'll, I'll, add, um, I'll add the new discovered Apex domains or, or things like that into um, my workflow. Um, Jason, I think that's, that's all the time we have. OK, great. Thank you so much for the wonderful session. And awesome. uh, for everybody else who have any questions and stuff, you can always tag Jason and uh, uh, on Twitter, uh, he's like responding to almost all the tweets that I see. So feel free to reach out to him. And all right. again, thank you for the wonderful session. Awesome. Thanks, thank everybody. You. Have a good one.